Bridget Helms, Executive Director at Miller Center for Social Entrepreneurship. And I'm here with PK, who is a seven-year veteran as a mentor here at Miller Center. And this is part of an interview series on impact pioneers that we are conducting as part of our 25th anniversary celebration here at Miller Center. So thank you so much for being here with us today, PK. Thank you, Bridget, for being an opportunity to talk to you and uh, be part of the celebration. Awesome, thanks. First question is, what was Miller Center like when you first encountered it? So I started uh, with Miller Center in 2015. Uh, it was a small, much smaller organization then. Uh, many fewer mentors, fewer SCs. Uh, I think we had two programs. Uh, I think one was an online program for early stage uh, entrepreneurs and an uh, in-residence program for more mature entrepreneurs. And I think each of those were conducted twice a year. Uh, but since then, we've had uh, I think an expansion of the programs. Uh, we didn't have these focused programs like women's economic empowerment or climate uh, resilience programs then. All that came later. Of course, the number of mentors in expired, increased. We have many more, uh, you know, these programs, and some of them going concurrently and so forth. So, right. so just a big expansion in activity. Uh, and then uh, you weren't there at that time. No, there's I was other, not there. there. <laughs> there's other other difference. <laughs> That's right. That's a difference, I guess. <laughs> During your work with Miller Center, can you describe a, an aha moment that you might have had? I can't think of a single aha moment, but uh, it sort of gradually dawned on me what, uh, as a mentor, I could be of help. I mean, uh, initially, I, when I first encountered social entrepreneurs, especially the investors programs, they were, were quite accomplished, they were experienced, they knew about the business. Right. So I was feeling a little like an, sort of an imposter syndrome. Yeah, what am I doing? Yeah. Uh, you know. Uh, then, but then gradually I realized that. Uh, my role is probably to be curious about their business, ask uh, good questions, okay. and not try to be prescriptive. You know, so, ah. uh, so I think that is working a lot better. And over time, of course, uh, my uh, knowledge and uh, maturity grew, and so right. I was probably gradually getting more, becoming more helpful. I think. But <laughs> <laughs> so I guess the aha is just sort of about how even with these very accomplished right, right. entrepreneurs, you can still yeah. add value yeah. by asking the right questions. Mm -hmm. and yeah, so because we realized that you know the we realized early on the Silicon Valley models that we are used to may not directly apply in these uh, right. you know, in these uh, regions. Uh, you know, there's there's a context difference of context, and then uh, you know we are focusing on a completely different market. Right. Uh, so right. a lot of yeah. So so quickly realized that you know some of these things may not work and, and so forth. Right. And so uh, yeah, we try to think differently about. Their oh, problems. that's so interesting. Yeah. I've noticed that too. That some of the. Some of the principles are sort of oh, yeah, universal yeah. and others are very context specific. Yeah, exactly. So figuring out yeah. which yeah. are which, I think. You know, for example, VCC like to talk about product market fit. They say, you know, you have a product idea, go and iterate over different markets, figure out which market works best for your product. But in our case, I think we're, you know, the market is sort of given, right? I mean, we are going to, these are the people we need to impact and then you've got to figure out what service or product makes sense for them. Ah, uh, yeah, right? that's cool. So it's sort of the model is turned and then places like to look for growth opportunities. They want startups to grow rapidly. Mm -hmm. And I don't think that's the primary <laughs> motivation here for right. Entrepreneurs, right? Right, right. Yeah. I mean, certainly want growth, but it might not be that kind of hockey stick. Yeah, the stick, hockey stick kind of uh, thing. Right. Yeah, that yeah. unicorn seeking yeah. kind of growth, yeah. As I mentioned, uh, this is our 25th anniversary and Miller Center really has been a pioneer itself in, yeah. um, in that social entrepreneurship space and social impact space. So how do you think Miller Center can continue to blaze the trail forward in the next 25 years? Yeah, yeah uh, glad you asked me this question because I've been pondering this uh, issue, this question of you know, how effective is social entrepreneurship? As well, I'm trying to get, get some, doing some research and data on that. And a few things that occurred to me, and with my experience with social entrepreneurs, is that they spend maybe too much time looking for funding. Mm -hmm. um, but as we said, I mean, the Silicon Valley models don't necessarily apply there, and right. the way the VCs think, you know, doesn't match with what the uh, you know the SEs are after. Uh, I think that you know filling that gap, you know, uh, for for entrepreneurs in, uh, is important. Uh, I was thinking that we spend in Miller Center so much time with the entrepreneurs that we know their business really well. 
and that's what you need to figure out how to you know fund these big organizations. Yeah. So we have all the knowledge necessary to fund them. The only thing we're not doing is funding. It's getting there. Yeah. And I was actually talking at the reception with uh, Andrew Lieberman about, mm -hmm. hey, why not Miller Center be a funder? And then minutes later, you made the announcement about the uh, Miller Center <laughs> impact. And I think that is a bold and wonderful move. I think. Uh, that will, you know, uh, help our entrepreneurs a lot. Uh, you know, so that's one. And the other thing I've been thinking about is that the way we talk about impact for Miller Center is that hey, you know, uh, the number of entrepreneurs we've sort of impacted and helped along their path and so forth. I was thinking whether we should instead focus on forming networks or clusters of enterprises because these, you know, in a network they feed off each other. They become a self-sustaining uh, entity and sort of, you know, new right. uh, and sort of create a fertile ground for new enterprises to start without our intervention, right? Right. One thing you could do is you could plant a lot of trees in a lot of different places and count the sure. number of trees we planted. The other thing would be to create a, you know, a forest in yeah. a small area where yeah. with a lot of biodiversity, right. right? So that the forest it just starts growing by itself. Nice. Uh, you know. A couple of things. One thing is that businesses need other businesses because they you know, need complementary services and so forth. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing is that when, when there's a cluster of business in area, talent also develops in that area. Right. 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 So it sort of becomes a self-sustaining ecosystem. And this is just speculation. I don't know if that's the right thing to do, mm -hmm. but I don't know whether you know that way of thinking about it mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. would help uh, I like the, that. sort of kickstart social entrepreneurship in a, in a sort of, you know, good way. Nice. Yeah. The other thing I'm thinking is that I realize that social entrepreneurs need uh, connections, not just for funding, but you know, mentorship, advice, and so forth. Mm -hmm. But people who have sort of experienced the same mm -hmm. uh, hurdles that they're right. facing. Uh, so we have a lot of SCs, but we don't have a good online forum for them to exchange ideas mm -hmm. and so forth. Mm -hmm. uh, the, you know, the, the box platform that we have probably is not very conducive. Nobody ever <laughs> uses yeah. that. So I'm thinking that yeah, creating something that shouldn't be right. you know, uh, it's not a a uh, huge effort, but mm -hmm. uh, I think it will go a long way. And mentors and investors, and they see talking to each other and so mm -hmm. forth in a common forum. Great, nice. I think. That's a, those are some great ideas. Yeah, We're definitely going right. to put those in my pocket okay. <laughs> and make sure that we, uh, sure. we implement on them. Thanks so much. So, PK, you're here also because we consider you to be an impact pioneer. Okay. And um, I'd love to hear from you, what does that mean to you? I don't know, I don't somehow consider myself an impact pioneer because I play a fairly small role in <laughs> <laughs> this whole business. The SEs do, you know, all the work. Uh, all the work. Ken, of course, builders interest, you know, uh, helps them along the way and so forth. But speaking generally, I mean, without reference to myself, is that I think being a pioneer means uh, taking risks, mm -hmm. doing experiments, trying new models, and then uh, perhaps making mistakes along the way and being comfortable with making mistakes. Yeah, I think that's. Yeah. That's really key. Yeah. It's really key. Great. Well, thank you so much for being here with us thank today. You. Thank I really you. appreciate chatting with you. Thank you.